Okay, so Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1, starts out and it says, The sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. Uh, so we are told here that this last chapter of Proverbs is an oracle. The New International Version says an inspired utterance. Some versions might say a prophecy. And the idea is that... Uh, this is from his mother's teachings, and this was a burden on Lemuel's shoulders. Okay, His mother taught him this, and this weighed heavy on him. Not in a negative way, but in a positive way, in a way he wanted to share it with others. So he's, he's getting this off of his shoulders in order to help us. Uh, we know nothing of King Lemuel or his mother. Uh, the name Lemuel means to him... L. Okay, and L is a word for God. So this is a, a man who is committed to God. This is to, he, is, he is to God. And some have suggested that Lemuel is another name for Solomon or another name for King Hezekiah. No evidence or proof of that. It's kind of an interesting thought. But others say that he was a king of Massa, a territory up by Babylon. Like I said, we just don't have enough inform or any information about this guy except for what's right here. But what I think is interesting is that through Proverbs, the primary emphasis has been on a father teaching his son, right? It's Solomon, my son, listen, listen to your father's teachings, listen to your father's teachings, listen to your father's teachings. But Proverbs ends with the teachings that a mother has given to her son. So that's verse 1. Just tells us about King Lemuel. Verses 2 through 9. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. So Lemuel's uh, mother gives him advice here for how to be a good king. How to be a good king. And she starts out and she identifies her love and her commitment to Lemuel. She says that he is her son. And then she remembers back to the day of of his birth. Uh, listen, son of my womb. And then she remembers the prayers and vows she had made for her son even before he was born. Okay, And if you're a parent, that probably takes you back to the time you were uh, expecting your ch a child to be born, right? You pray for that child even before they're born. I remember Barbie and I, We, from the moment we found out we were expecting, uh, we were praying for their spouse. You know, so you, you pray, you pray for that child, you dream for that child. You know, you just, it's just what you do. And and uh, Lemuel's mom did the same thing here. Well, then she addresses three specific things: advice to him as a king. Two of them are negative things to avoid, and the third is positive something he must do. So the first warning is about women. The mother warns Lemuel not to spend his strength. It could also mean not to spend his wealth on women. It's the idea of not wasting your resources on women. Now, obviously he's not talking about a good woman, right? Because if you're familiar with Proverbs chapter 31, the last five-eighths of this chapter are focused on a good woman. Okay? So that's not the warning. It's not, don't, don't, uh, don't spend any of your time, any of your money, any of your energy on any woman. That's not what she's saying. Okay? But she's saying, be careful the kind of woman that you pursue. Because if you pursue the wrong kind of woman, it's going to lead you astray. It's going to lead you astray. She's not advising him to never align himself with a woman, like we said, because uh, the last part of the chapter is advice for a good wife. But she is warning him not to waste his resources on flings. That's my word. Not the King James Version or NIV. That's my word. Okay, but the second part of verse 3 is interesting. It says, your vigor on those who ruin kings. 
It is still probably talking about wasting resources on flings with women, but literally what it says is, don't go down a path that is going to make your kingship insignificant. Remember, she's giving him advice how to be a good king. And that comes from the meaning, so this idea of don't go down a path that is going to make your kingship insignificant, that kind of hangs on the meaning of two words here. And the first word is the word vigor in the New International Version. But that is the word that is usually translated as path or road. Uh, it means the course of one's life. The second word this hangs on is that word ruin, which means to rub smooth or to blot out. So it seems that what Lemuel's mother is telling him is that he can either be a king of significance, or if he wastes his resources, his time, his money, his energy, his reputation, etc., on, on flings with certain kinds of women, his time as king will come and go, and he will just be a blip in history. Uh, she is calling him to live a life of significance. And there is a lot of wisdom in that for us. Right? You can waste your life doing a whole bunch of fun but meaningless things and be quickly forgotten. Or you can use your life to make a difference. And that's what this mom is telling her son who's going to become a king. Be careful how you live your life, what you give your time to, what you give your energy to, what you give your resources to. Because if you make bad choices, You'll just be a blip in history. But if you make good choices, you can have a significant life and be a significant king. Well, next, she warns him about alcohol. Okay? Says, uh, she says, uh, it's not for kings, Lemuel, it's not for kings to drink wine, nor for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing. Wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Kings would have all kinds of beer and wine at their disposal because they could just order their subjects to give them more. Uh, I did a very quick bit of research, and it seems like the difference between wine and beer here is that wine is fermented fruit and beer is made with grain. That just seems to be the only difference that we're talking about. But obviously, both of them had alcohol content because the point is that drinking either or both could cloud the king's judgment. And she warns Lemuel not to drink much of it because it might cause him to forget what he had decreed. It might cause him um, to not make good judgments. Uh, remember what the book of Ephesians says about getting drunk on wine. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to reckless and immoral choices. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then the whole point of that verse is um, the Holy Spirit will influence you or wine can influence you. They're both influencers, right? And the way wine or alcohol will influence you is that it will cloud your judgment so you make unwise, immoral choices. Okay, and her third warning then, her third warning is the positive one. It says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. So that's a positive one, and that is that Lemuel is to be a king of justice. He is to be a good, fair king. Take care of his people. 